Legion Origins is brought to you by Warner Brothers and Legendary Pictures Pacific Rim in theaters July 12th. High-tech robots that interface with your brain, like those in Pacific Rim, that's the focus of this episode of IGN Origins, your source of the day's entertainment and the origins behind the inspiration. In theaters July 12, Pacific Rim is bringing eye-popping realism to the mechosphere in ways never before seen by fans of the genre. But is fantasy setting the stage for science and technology in the real world? All that and more in this episode of IGN Origins. My favorite cyborgs or robots or use of mech in pop culture is definitely the Imperial Walkers, which I think is a classic. Star Wars, the droids. Star Trek had some, some robots. Illogical, illogical. I love how Ripley took functional mech in Aliens and turned it into weaponized mech. I am a fan of the Cylons, though they did kill all of the humans. I am also a fan of Terminator, though they did kill all the humans as well. Just sheer unstoppable force. He's not huggable like R2-D2 or C-3PO, you know, he is there for one purpose and he won't stop. So I think people have always been interested in robotics. No matter what we say about the fear of robots taking over or fighting for us, Everyone's always loved robotics. The kinds of technologies that we're seeing in Pacific Rim really reflect a lot of research that's going on today, a lot of which here at the Robotics Institute. We at the Robotics Institute are working on human-robot interaction. In Pacific Rim, you have these two people who are driving a robot where they're connected you know, between their minds and their bodies to get this giant humanoid form robot to go where they want it to go. My research involves designing brain-computer interfaces. You remember in Star Wars where Luke Skywalker was, he, he had lost his hand and they replaced the hand and they, and they show the little gears moving uh, just by him thinking about it. The idea is that patients who are paralyzed, who for whatever reason, spinal cord injury, stroke, something like that, have lost the ability to communicate with their muscles and limbs, we could use these devices to allow them to gain some kind of control over a computer cursor or a robotic limb and really alleviate uh, the, the symptoms of paralysis. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. A six million dollar man, or bionic man, they called him sometimes, uh, I had a, a leg disease as a child, and I had a cast on both my legs from, from uh, upper thigh to my ankles with a board between my ankles, and I had to walk like this. And, um, you know, being a little kid, you use your imagination so you don't feel completely freaky about something like that. So I had kind of convinced myself, using my imagination, that I had bionic legs like Steve Austin. And I had the, the Lee Majors doll, all that stuff. Um, and this is kind of exciting and, and uh, nice, to, nice to know that we're actually living in an era now when that sort of thing can be helpful for people who have a series of conditions, whether it's from an accident, uh, war-related injuries, neurological conditions. Um, you know, clearly it's gonna, it, it gives a lot of people hope where there, there wasn't any. We're not at the point where we can control uh, those really large robots that have those incredible capabilities that they demonstrate in the Pacific Rim trailers. Uh, but we're certainly at the point where we can control fairly sophisticated robotic limbs. Uh, and hopefully, sometime in the near future, uh, we'll be able to control things that mimic the human body and can really extend our capabilities. We're gonna see more and more robots used within the next 10 years, but I think we're gonna not think of them as robots. We're gonna see machines in the operating room, we're gonna see machines flying over agricultural fields, we're gonna see robots helping the elderly, but I think they'll become so commonplace we won't think of them as robots anymore. I think that traditionally science and science fiction have traded back and forth, and I think that they will continue to do so. They feed off of each other in sort of a positive feedback loop. It's gonna be very interesting to see if the, the, the little kids 
or even the, the young college students who are going to see Pacific Rim, they're going to look at that and say, hmm, I could build maybe not a 100-foot robot, but I could come up with something that could make somebody's life better, something that inspired me design-wise from this movie. Pacific Rim is sure to inspire a new generation of scientists and engineers to help us get closer to realizing the technology that could one day give birth to life-saving robotic devices, or who knows, maybe 150-foot Jaegers. Be sure to check out the film opening July 12th. It could be you one day that brings these mythical machines to the real world. Thank <laughs> you.